and we're back with some more room worlds and today we're dealing with some bears yeah there's some suggestions that we should try and tame these bears or something along those lines but i don't think that's really going to be possible namely we need a whole bunch of medicine to do it and we cannot heal these bears there's just too many and even if we did have the medicine they'd still you know we'd still have to try and tame them and the odds of that would be very slim so instead we're just, jesus that's loud we're just going to go with some overwhelming firepower variants Okay, but... Oh, god damn it. A bunch of them made it into this bedroom. How? The donkeys. Of course they did. The donkeys opened the door, the bears rushed in, and they were chasing after Patronus who I ran away, but I figured once Patronus was out of here, they'd stop. Ah, uh, bugger, yeah, enough doors open everywhere. No, no, it's fine. We'll just bring the rest of the team back and we'll take care of this other set of bears. On the bright side, uh, this did kill an Imperial trade group, so I suppose we'll get a hammer or something out of it. Not really worth it. Do you too have an infestation of bears in your bedroom? Then might I introduce you to the Heavy SMG, known for taking care of those annoying bears and making sure your bedroom is clean for habitation again. Jesus. Also, donkeys, they're a real annoyance when they let bears in. Dear Lord. Things that only get said in RimWorld. Anyway, we'll lure the last of these out, hopefully add some meat to our fridge, and then we'll get on with finishing those bedrooms. While we wait for the eclipse to subside, we are still going to keep working on these bedrooms. We're going to need to put together another couple of blocks of these at least if we're going to hold the, uh, the targeted number of colonists. In fact, I might just send out a quick mining expedition. With this bedroom finished, we can finally migrate everyone out of the barracks. Now, we have left a couple of unfloored areas in here, namely because aesthetics. You need to make sure that they've got a, an awful room to sleep in to give them their nice little plus five bonus. Everyone else gets a room that's going to give them a plus two bonus. It's also air conditioned and it's a raid. Well, guys, come on. I was in the middle of explaining stuff and oh, that's gonna suck. That's a mech hive. It's dropping right on top of us. And judging by the size of that shadow cloud, I'd say that's a lot of pods, which makes me think they want my chickens. You cannot have my chickens. We have spent so long developing this army of chickens. We have how many? Yeah, we have 59 chickens. I've been building up the numbers and we still have several males so that most of the eggs end up fertilized. And I was just getting to the point where I was going to collect most of the males so we'd be eating most of the eggs. No, you are not getting these. No. Okay, right, plan, plan. We are faced with a tough choice. If we pull back out of this area and don't defend this, we will lose all of the transport pods and all of the fuel that's in them. All of them are loaded up with fuel. That could be awkward. However, if we fight here, we might end up breaking open these rooms. And what's the bet? If I break this room here, there'll be a cold snap immediately afterwards to destroy all our beer. You just know that's what Randy's thinking. Break this room open, get in a cold snap. Hmm. But if we don't do anything, you know what? I say we get them all on board. Bring in everyone. Right. But where to send them? Like, we could send them all over there. Ooh, that's a lot of people. But we might just want to split them. So you have one group over here, a second group over... Ooh. It really depends what comes out of the pods. If we're facing Lancers, we do not want to get involved in a fight. If it's Scythers, which I'm hopeful it's Scythers, judging by the size of it, they should hopefully... Yeah, we can draw them into a choke point and just kill them, or even just pull back from here, and we'll have so much firepower we should be able to mow them down. Let me organize this so that we don't have people passing through this area. Very simple, a whole bunch of them, but 24 humans are going to come pile up over here. The rest are going to pile up over here. And depending on what we face will be what we do. Now, chickens, why are you not moving? I told you all to go to the new zone. Uh, oh, wait, no. I told them to go to that area. All of you go to this area. Christ, that is a lot of chickens. All right, all the chickens should start moving now. Come on, come on, come on. In all fairness, if we lose five or six, it won't be the worst deal in the world. You should probably not go that way. You know what? Go back that way. And then take the smart way there. Oh, animals. Yeah, all the animals are being pulled back as well. I knew it. Scythers. Right. Uh, you know what? We could use some chickens as animal blockers. Oh, they are going to mow down a bunch of animals. Mm. Bring it on, Scythers. Bring it on. Okay, they're going to definitely kill a few around. Cody! God damn it, Cody. What are you doing over there? Okay, no time to play. Maybe go back a little bit. Oh, chicken's opening side doors. We're going to have a few injuries here, I'd say, from this, but... Jerek! You muppet! You went through the one area covered in scythers, you absolute wally. Okay, you guys, open that door. Uh, you... <laughs> This is just dumb. 
Yep. Yep, that's a lot of dead chickens. Uh, you, Scyther, we need to haul you out of the way. You, can you haul it? We'll never do hauling. That's fine. Can you haul it? That's fine. Ah, that's perfect. Go back to there. Whew. Jarek, how are you doing? Oh, you're unconscious. Well, no surprises there. You ran across open ground, buddy. That wasn't a smart plan. Oop, oop, oop. There, how's Jarek looking? They are health-wise seven hours until they're bleeding out. Oh, God damn it, chickens. Why did you have to die in the doorway? That's just making things awkward. Please tell me no scythers followed you. Yep, there's a scyther of... <laughs> okay, that's it. You know what? I am changing the zone that the chickens are in so it surrounds that scyther. We're going to see a scyther die to chicken bites. Oh, wow. Actually, never mind. We'll let them, we'll let them do what they're doing. Uh, these guys are going to have to handle that on their own. So long as that door closes, they should be fine. Anything that comes through there will just get pounded on by an awful lot of people. You two guys go over there as well so you can help out. Everyone else is bunching up over here. Perfect. Okay, done, 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 done. And done. That is perfect. In fact, that is so perfect. We're going to get a lot of you to... Oh, God damn it. They're still... I was hoping you'd go over here to these guys. Oh, they're changing their mind. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so... Firing line. Yep, that seems like a good idea. Firing line right there. Come on. Jesus. Those things can take a hell of a pounding. You guys, you know what? You can join in in this. Uh, let's go right over here and join in immediately. So I think... I think they got it. We might lose a person or two, but you know what? At this point, I don't really care too much. We've got so many people, it's kind of ridiculous. Messy? Not gonna lie. Very, very messy and lots of injuries to go around. But considering how quickly we dealt with it, I'm okay. And we saved these resources down here, which weren't really that important, but honestly... Our most plentiful resource right now is people. So the odd injury or two won't be the end of the world. Please tell me, oh damn it, they were a constructor. Please tell me we didn't lose any limbs. Okay, you just lost a toe. That's fine. We'll get you a, okay, we won't get you a new toe anytime soon. Now the question is, does Randy hit us with a cold snap? That, that was my guess. I was guessing a cold snap right now because the walls here have been destroyed. I've got people rushing to try and repair them. But if a cold snap were to strike, say, just this moment, no, no. It would destroy all our beer, but I think our beer will be fine. What's that, 19C outdoors? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be good so long as nothing happens. Oh, we did get uh, a chicken that got addicted to ambrosia. They ended up in our stomach. Uh, we scanned some jade. Some people had some problems. We had a legendary heavy SMG created by the Schweitzer. They immediately got to equip it because, you know what, might as well. Uh, we got some malaria, but it was fairly minor. Only affected about 19 people. However, our medical supplies are pretty low. If you'll notice, our herbal medicine is... 38. Uh, we used to have a hundred and something regular medicine, but I think that got sort of eaten into by the malaria. We have not named this new recruit yet, but they barely survived malaria. I was holding off on naming a bunch of people until some time had passed, but uh, I think we, we should probably name these soon before they end up getting themselves killed. Two bulk goods traders have shown up. This one over here, no cows. This one over here, chickens, no cows. So many chickens have shown up with all these bulk goods traders. If you ever want to run chickens, it turns out it's very easy and you can mass produce the uh, the amount of them very quickly. The only downside is you need an awful lot of hay grass to keep them going. All right, let's let's uh, let's actually go through a quick naming ceremony for our four newest recruits. First up, please welcome Odin Mishilek. They're going straight into science with a side in cleaning, namely because, well, there's we don't need any more artists anymore. So, welcome to the team, Chief. Do bear in mind they're one of the Empire's troops, so they come with a built-in death acidifier, and normally they're just straight up good at shooting the moment they start, so no hunting requirements for this one. Next up, we have Lieutenant Shepard. They'll be going into mining and, well, that's it. We have so many people now, we're just specialising them into whatever is they're, they're best at. In this case, it's going to be mining, though they will be helping out a little bit with the wardening. Uh, minor health condition on the leg, death acidifier, of course, because with the Empire. Of course, they're jealous, which means we're going to have to give them a nice room. They're tough which is great, but they're also a wimp, so we're going to have to get them some sort of uh, pain stopper. That's it, we'll get them a pain stopper. They're already in uh, the uh, jealous slash greedy section of the bedrooms. For our 74th colonist, we have Rick Wies. They're going to be crafting and cleaning. Just dedicated crafter, little side in cleaning. Their shooting is already eight because they're an empire troop, but fast learner, excellent for crafters, uh, misogynist, who cares, and greedy, the greediest. 
So they also have to have a special bedroom. So that's one greedy and one jealous in a row. That's sort of impressive. Uh, in terms of health, well, no real major problems, despite, despite the destroyed kidney. However, their ability to recover from injuries is pretty bad. They're probably going to die of an infection at some point in the future. Number 75, three quarters of a century. We've got a build crafter, which is great. A, a builder is just, we can never have enough builders. Uh, unfortunately, they're also a pessimist, which is not going to help very much, but they are a fast walker. So yeah, they'll, they'll work out. Old gunshot in their shoulder, but barring that, no other major medical conditions we need to worry about. So I'd just like to point out, in the last four colonists we've got, one of them has is a chemical fascination pyromaniac that's staggeringly ugly. Uh, the next one is a jealous wimp, which means they need a fancy bedroom and they can't handle pain. And our next one is a greedy misogynist who's also going to require a fancy bedroom. And our final one is a pessimist. <laughs> so, yeah, let's just say this, uh, was it the mob of misfits here are doing... Yeah, we're definitely living up to the name. They are a complete mob of misfits of all sorts of random characters, which no one would ever hire in most instances. Halo Davis here joined us just recently, and they had cirrhosis of the liver. We managed to pick up a liver in one of our trade caravans, and I'd completely for forgotten about it. But now we get to install them a bright new shiny liver. Hopefully it doesn't mess up, because if it does, you know, I'm not sure they'll survive it. Okay, boom. Brand new shiny liver installed. They should be good to go. Well, not brand new, but, you know, only slightly used. Well, we got another little minor issue going on here with a... Oh, actually, you know what? Let's, uh... Let's not make that allowed anymore. Here we go. A little bit of a too deep infestation. Nope, Jacob. Nope. 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 Get in there, buddy. Get away from the bugs. Everyone get away from the bugs. Now, this should... Be, mm, Joey. You know what, Joey? We are just going to leave you there. In fact, we are... One moment while I change a few door permissions here. Oh, wait. Here they are. Jesus. And done. That's how you take care of a too deep infestation. The great thing is the too deep infestation stayed the same size while we just keep getting bigger. Oh yeah. All right. We'll uh, let everyone back to work, crack open those doors again, and uh, get back on with our normal routine. That was pretty handy, actually. Over here, we have managed to finish up the flooring of this whole area. It is now an unbelievably impressive dining room slash recreational area. Uh, with that done, and with everyone moved out of this area, every single bed is now currently unoccupied. We can now actually uninstall all of those. We can all go. We're going to turn this entire area into one big hospital. Now, we could use that, was it, that wonderful sterile tile, but no. Uh, we're sort of doing this on the cheap, and I kind of like doing it that way. Steel tile is pretty much, well, okay, it's not as good, but it will do for our purposes. And we'll just make sure to get the four doors as well. This is going to be our new hospital area. And this will be, well, the beginnings of our hospital. It's going to have to expand quite a bit considering the amount of injuries we were anticipating, but, you know, if we get a massive outbreak of malaria or something like that, we should hopefully have enough hospital beds next time around. Though we're going to need a lot more steel. Each one of these beds... Oh, artificial metabolism is finished. We'll get this dry. We'll finish off this. We're, we're keeping an eye out for any of these uh, special tech print techs, and we're grabbing all of them. I mean, we've got literally every other technology researched. It's something to be said for having two research benches and about five or six researchers constantly running around looking for something to do. Anyway, this place here, we're going to have to maybe get rid of the tables. Or actually, no, we can leave the dining room here. It won't really affect the hospital. I think it can be a hospital and a dining room all at once. Why not? In fact, maybe I shouldn't have taken out the chess tables. Hmm. We can, we can put in some more. This is going to take a little while to come together any further, namely because we need more steel. We'll have to start mass producing steel. In fact, we have... A steel miner over here and here and another two over here that are almost finished ripping that out of the ground. In terms of steel production, where are we? We have, yep, steel down here and we've got 1,200 steel on the map. But it's about 120 per bed, so that's, what, another 10 beds we can make? It's amazing how much steel you need for those things. Anyway, we're going to have this person over here equip, equip a Molotov. I think it's time we uh, grab some more Silinx and see if we can't get some more trainers. We're going to start uh, recruiting again soon, so... Uh, can you hit it? Yay, perfect. You can equip that, and we'll change the zones. Yeah, we don't want any of that in the home zone. Let them get back to work. I think uh, it's time to call in the next recruitment ceremony. We actually have... Ooh, Pika. Yeah, Pika's one, I believe, the guy will bring about four or five. So, yeah, we will totally accept that. Oh, is Pika set in here? Yes, they are. Perfect. There's also another quest here, Shelter for Nobles, which I'm very tempted by. We have to... Uh, we have to 
have 13 Imperials from an enemy jail. We have to basically keep them at a above 30% mood. Um, Imperials appreciate quality accommodation. You will gain goodwill with the Emperor if you keep their average mood above 50%. I think we can handle this, especially considering we've invested in this whole royal area over here. Now, there's only 12 beds, but I'm sure we can sort something out. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll see what this see what happens with this bestowing ceremony. Oh, this is one of the rough ones. Psychic drone high male. I hate these ones. All we need now is some sort of muscle parasite breakout or something like that, just to drive things really crazy. Uh, maybe burn some corpses while we've got the chance. I would hate for anyone to see a bunch of them right now. Anything that gives negative moods is going to start driving people crazy. It's time for a concert. Oh yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I like the odd fight now and then, but Jesus. There's something so ridiculous about having so many pawns in one area. Oh, there's some insults. I don't know. You, you could get that mod that allows you to see what conversations they're having, but I think with this many pawns, it would just be impossible to actually do anything. Though at least they're getting some socialization in. The map is so huge that they really don't really get much of a chance. Oh, and there's 14 male chickens that have uh, recently been hatched. So I really wish we had one of those psi weapons that would allow us to harvest animals for psi focus, but unfortunately we haven't managed to get our hands on one of those yet. Maybe next year. We were just about to move our science section here when one of our pawns decided it was time to leave the colony. Uh, the, co the pawn was Alex. I can't really blame them too much considering the high psychic drone is giving them a minus 71. Their uh, psychic hypersensitivity is a little bit painful. I should have made them put on a tinfoil hat, but I forgot to. So we're going to have a quick resting section. And what happens if we let them go? No. Still want to give up and leave. Okay. Well, in that case, we're going to have to arrest them, imprison them, and then recruit them again, I suppose. We might be able to release them after we've put them back in there. I don't mind. Either way, we can we can afford this. Uh, how are you doing, actually, up there? 95% Psychite Addiction Patrol on our uh, 13th colonist, Jason Zelensky. That's not the worst. Okay, Alex, what do you look like? Your resistance is 28. That's actually not too bad. We'll just grab a trust person over here. We'll get word of trust and oh, you're asleep. Okay, but first thing in the morning, we're going to zap you with two of those and then bring you back uh, on board. All right, now where were we? Ah, yes. Science. After two quick zaps of word of trust, their resistance is already broken and now we just have to try and recruit them, which recruitment chance is 100%. So shouldn't that mean it's instantaneous? Come on. Uh, quest available. Contract workers. Oh, how many workers do you think of ours do they want? Contract workers, let's see. 41 colonists. Hmm, for, for two weeks. Well, I would like to free up that much food. Uh, no, no, we, we need them to defend here. Okay, I think we're going to accept this one, though, in a minute. Though, I'd prefer something with a little bit more fight to it. I haven't killed anything in ages, and I'm getting a little bit itchy. You know what I mean? Okay, fine, there was some... There was some mechanoids that showed up, but that wasn't a real fight, you know? There was no doomsdays or fire or chaos. To continue with the expansion of the colony, we are going to need to acquire more resources. So I'm thinking we wall in this area here and claim it for all of the steel that's underneath the ground. At the same time, we're going to need to get some closer tables so that our construction crews have somewhere to eat without getting that uh, nasty 8 without table debuff. Well, it's more the uh, the impressive room bonus that gives them a plus 6 and combined with the table debuff. It's just nicer to have tables nearby. Uh, we might want to extend that room all the way out to here if we're going to go building this direction. Looks like our two pulk goods traders have shown up and inspired recruitment, and yeah, um, unfortunately they've only got one cow, but, you know, or another way to look at it is, they brought us a cow. All of this effort of bringing in these, I think, has na nabbed us, what, three, four cows at this point? I think it's worthwhile. Also, all of the current cows we have that are in here, every single last one of them is pregnant. Ah, here we are. So, oh, in fact, one of them's already given birth. They had a single calf. Ah, pity. And the calf is male. So, yeah, we'll just call that one a bust. Oh well, unfortunate. But we do have another cow inbound, so that'll bring us up to eight females. And just a little bit more expansion out here to put in more tables so that we can uh, expand further. There's sort of this weird dynamic of the further you get away from the base, the harder it is to keep your pawns happy. They, they keep missing out on getting the dining room bonuses, they don't get they're too far away from the recreation, food restock, all that, so you sort of had to expand out and bring all the facilities with you. It's a little bit weird, but after a while you kind of get used to it. Ooh, masterwork what? Marble statue. All of the masterworker legendary art pieces all go into the uh, dining slash recreation areas, of which we currently have one, two, and three. I'm kind of surprised we haven't had another death recently. Every time we finish one of these, we seem to end up with a pawn ending up dead. So I was kind of expecting once we'd finished this that something would happen, a pawn would die, and we'd get to put someone in the sarcophagus, just for recreational purposes. 
Uh, it's fortunately hasn't happened, I suppose. Oh, wow. I completely missed a wedding. That's, um... Yep, get your social on, people. This is really going to help with mood st bonuses. I'm, uh, I, I'm seeing a whole bunch of inspirations coming on in the near future. All we need is for some human meat bags to attack us so that we can get some prisoners on. I really want to ramp up recruitment again. We finally got caught up with where we need to be. Now it's just a case of expanding and keeping up with it. Like, we have a whole bunch of bedrooms just waiting for more prisoners. So give us just one big attack that we can cook up some more fresh recruits with, please. I think... I think we'll actually just annex this entire section. I mean, if we just grab, say, everything from here down to... Oh, about there, let's say. Oh, damn it. Yeah, there's this in the way. Uh, we're going to need to get moisture pumps. So you know what? We'll go all the way down to here instead. Perfect. Uh, actually, no. To there. That annexes that entire section. Any resources that show up in there are at least double walled. So if there's a single outer wall breach, we can still mine in here and not worry about stuff. Drop pods will, of course, always be an issue, but you know, there's no avoiding those. And then we can get around to actually getting rid of this as well. I think that, yeah, I'll have to put in some doors, but this is going to be our next section of expansion. Oops, kind of missed the second wedding. So we've had one concert and two weddings so far. Yeah, I, uh, damn it. There's so much stuff going on. Hey, I don't care. Everyone's getting a plus 35 moodlet bonus, and that's going to last for another almost seven days. Oh, inspired creativity, inspired... Sort of, yeah, there's there's going to be a bunch of really inspired stuff for a while now. Hold on, we'll be there off all this stuff. Nothing really crazy happened. Uh, what do we got? Yeah, let's see if either of these can do crafting or construction. Honestly, no. They're not worth it. Their, uh, their skills are not good enough in construction or art for it to be worth using those inspirations. Never mind, we'll just, uh, we'll finish claiming this section of land. Oh, and that quest I meant to take expired, but I, I don't care. I want something with a little bit of violence to it, if at all possible. Come on, Randy, let's see what you got. While this is going on, I should probably go over some of the things we've been doing in the background, just because they're sort of becoming very relevant. We've got inspired surgery, inspired taming, inspired trade, all right. Hey, this machining bench over here was, this whole area was expanded. We improved all of our uh, wooden tailoring benches, so we have a whole bunch of these going now, and they're basically set up for, if there's nothing else going on, make button shirts forever on this one. This one is make pants forever, and there is no restrictions on what workers could use them or what skill they have to be. The only restrictions that go on here is for the dusters. Dusters are set to make forever with heavy fur, rhino leather and devil strand because those three are the best for making dusters with we don't really care about the underclothes but the dusters we do this means we turn all the leathers and hides we're getting from clearing the wildlife every so often like we go around and we clear all of those out all of those leathers and hides are turned into clothing we sell those to the bulk goods traders that we summon and that keeps them happy with us or we just gift them to them to keep them happy so we can hopefully get more cows we also get some money out of it at the same time we have one colonist here mobile Mo mobile mobile their only job is to make flak vests. That's all they've been doing. Now, you'll notice that zero of ten flak vests, but there's a reason for that. It's set up here so that the quality has to be of good quality or better. So what they do is they just keep making flak vests until there's ten flak vests in storage that are good quality or better. However, if we drop this down one level to normal, you'll notice there's 22 flak vests in storage. What's going on here is the moment a good flak vest is completed, anyone who's got a normal or worse flak vest will come along, grab the good one, and stick it on. Meaning there's now zero good flak vests. What this means is slowly but surely all of the normal and wor or worse flak vests are being replaced with good flak vests as Mobile keeps producing more and more of them. Now the reason Mobile is set to this is they've got a good memory and they've got a burning passion for crafting. They're just going to get better and better and better at crafting. Don't get me wrong, Lee is an absolute monster. They're at 19, but they've they've got to keep going all day long just to keep it there. You'll notice there that their, their numbers just keep flicking back and forth between uh, 60, 61, 6,100, and oh, they can barely get up. They just keep going down because they, uh, they don't have the grit memory trait. Mobile should be able to actually hit 20. And, well, since Lee's better at the moment, they get to make all the guns. Lee is set to make... Well, let's see, 10 heavy SMGs of quality, good or better. And all of those get stored in our weapons locker over here. So you notice there's a, a whole bunch of good or better heavy SMGs. And slowly but surely, I've been trading out all the normal ones. We can't make people upgrade their SMGs automatically. So every so often, I sort of just have to go through here and see good, good, excellent. And basically until I find normal guns and then I replace the normal guns with excellent ones. All right. That is what has been going on in the background to make sure that everyone's uh, better equipped for the next fight we face. One other thing I've been doing is... Oof, I've been replacing all of those those nasty limbs that people don't need. Drill arm, 
drill arm, drill arm. So it's about seven people who now have drill arms. There's about seven people who now have field hands just to improve our farmers and our uh, miners. Right now, what sort of happens is these uh, these four drills that are operating here you, that you can barely see. Oh, one second. Uh, like, see, yeah. There's four drills right there, and they're all set to mine out marble chunks. Those marble chunks are then converted at these six stone cutters benches into marble chunk marble bri bricks those marble bricks we use for expansion now we usually ha hover around 2000 to 3000 bricks just because the amount we're spending versus the amount we're producing at the same time we also have three mining drills or four mining drills over here they're ripping out all that steel once that steel is ripped out we'll move them down here there's another seam of steel then there'll be another seam of steel over here there's more seams of steel here here and i think that steel well, this is why we're sealing in this area. This is future-proofing our steel supplies. Every so often, though, we do have to send off one caravan with four miners to bring us in more components. This gives us the steel and components to keep producing the heavy SMGs and the flak vests. To actually get cloth, that's all to do with... Oh, one second. I think you should call our ally Didus for a moment. Yeah, we want to request a bulk goods trader. Thank you. And then we want to call Tasca League. Yeah, request a trade caravan, good bulk goods trader. Perfect. So for cloth, we don't actually grow our own. Uh, we have so many bulk goods traders coming in, we actually just buy it. Oh, yeah, a package just got struck down by Randy. Well, no, they're still alive, but they definitely got struck by a lightning bolt. And rooster down. Yeah, hmm, never mind. This is where we keep all of our roosters and chickens and all that stuff over there. The population has recovered since the last scyther slaughter. And there's no more eggs to collect over there. The population of chickens explodes rather rapidly, but we have managed to keep on top of it. It'll, we'll, we will have to slaughter them, though, within the first toxic fog hits. Slowly, once if the, the hay runs out. All right, let's get back to this. This year, this year is just our next set of expansion. And looking at this map, I'm thinking giant crop area here, probably more sleeping quarters here, and probably here as well. What we need here right now is loads more prisoners. I need an organic attack to show up so that we can heat stroke a bunch of them out, trap them in the well, trap them in the tunnel to heat stroke them out. We need about 30, 40 prisoners. We can easily support that now. We've got more than enough food in storage. Now cow wise, yep, yeah, our cow population hasn't exactly taken off as much as we'd like. Ooh, ooh, we've got some more calves. What type of gender are they? Three new female cows, two males. I mean, there was no males. So three new female cows to combine with the ones we've already got already. Oh, sorry, that one needs to go as well. Nice. It's just slowly but surely this cow population should keep increasing and if we keep calling in bulk goods trader they'll, we'll sort of hit this tipping point in about a year and a half where we should have more than enough. If we actually do the math on these things they produce 18 milk a cycle. Each cow, well, each mature cow that can produce 18 milk per day actually can support about 1.8 colonists. Mm. The reason being they produce 18 milk, it takes 5 milk combined with 5 veg to make one fine meal, it takes 2 fine meals to feed someone for the day. So you can get, you know, three fine meals and change. But that means about 1.8 colonists per cow. That means the eight cows we have in there that are producing milk can provide enough fine meals for 14.4 colonists. Well, a little bit less because, you know, there's going to be downtime when they're ready for milking and by the time the animal person gets there. Oh, damn, I should crank up cleaning a notch. It's getting a little bit dirty in there. In fact, we have to... There's so many plans and so many things we need to do, and we just never have enough time for everything. I mean, we've barely gotten our hospital started. We've got up to nine beds, but we need about another... Oh god, we need about another 25 beds in there easy before I'm going to feel comfortable. And that's going to take 2,500 steel, which we still have to mine. How much steel do we currently got? 2,137. But we also need to complete our electrical grid, which goes out and down here and around. <laughs> There's, there's just this never-ending avalanche of stuff you have to do, and I love it. <laughs> All praises be to Randy. They have brought us a gift. A gift of 118 Fleshbag new recruits. Uh, they are all, of course, from Emily's exes, and most importantly, they're not sappers, so they'll go straight into our oven. Mm -mm -mm. Tasty, tasty, delicious. And in fact, what is it? Yeah, they're going to prepare for a while and then attack. So we've got plenty of time to get everyone to safety and prep the oven. Oh, thank you, Brandy. Thank you so much. Oh, okay, okay. But we're, we're, okay, there's no way I can get this done inside episode time. So we're, we're, we're going to have to leave this till tomorrow, but I'm thinking next up we're going to go on a bulk recruitment drive. Oh, do we have enough space? We're, we're going to need, we're going to need more prisoner spaces, aren't we? Mmm, mmm, damn it, damn it, damn it. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll uh, cut this out here. Sorry for the tease, but uh, I hope you enjoyed and good luck. Mm.